Asymmetric key encryption sounds fantastic. It allows Alice and Bob to bootstrap a secure uh, conversation without agreeing on a key. So there's no worry that the key is somehow has to be sent over an insecure channel or something, and so that's all good. But there's a problem with asymmetric key encryption. And the problem is that it's fairly computationally intensive to decrypt messages. So typically, asymmetric key encryption or public key encryption is not used for an entire communication between two parties. Instead, what I do is the two parties use it to agree on a symmetric key in a secure way. And then that symmetric key is used for the remainder of the conversation. So let's look at an example. I've got Alice and Bob, typically, as they usually are, trying to communicate over this uh, insecure internet. And here's the thing. So Alice has her public key. Bob has his public key. Those are published. They're online somewhere where each other can find it. And they also have their private keys that they're keeping secret so that they can decrypt messages that are sent to them. So let's say that Alice and Bob want to have a conversation. They want to do it securely. So again, they could use each other's public and keys to encrypt all the messages that they send back and forth. But it's fairly computationally intensive to decrypt those messages. And so there's a fair amount of load that goes into this. So let's not do it that way. Instead, here's what we do. Let's say that Alice starts a conversation. And she says um, she's going to uh, start talking to Bob. And they probably have some sort of protocol that they use to initiate the communication. But basically, what she needs to do is she needs to tell Bob, hey, why don't we use this symmetric key for the rest of our communications? Um, so here's what she would do. She would look up Bob's public key. And she knows how to send a message to Bob using this public key. So she, she takes um, her message. She encrypts it. Uh, using Bob's public key and sends this message to Bob. And then Bob takes that message, uses his private key, and decrypts it to recover the original message text. That's just standard public key asymmetric encryption. However, the contents of this message are a symmetric key that Alice wants to use for the rest of their communication. So Bob would say, OK. And then Bob would write back using that symmetric key. So the idea here is that this message is actually, uh, the contents of this message are actually a key. And now the next message that Bob sends over, he's going to encrypt using this key that Alice just proposed. So he sends this message to Alice. And now Alice can decrypt uh, that message using the key that she proposed to Bob. So, Notice that this key was never sent in the clear. It was never sent over an unencrypted channel. It was sent encrypted with Bob's public key. So there's no way that an adversary would have been able to detect or to eavesdrop on this key. Now, if I didn't have a public key cryptography infrastructure here, it would be very difficult for, for Alice and Bob to start this conversation. Now, it turns out there are some very clever math uh, ways for them to do this that require some, some sort of additional mathematics uh, that they can use to bootstrap something. And that's actually pretty fascinating. But this is, an, this is an, uh, one way of doing it. One, one way of doing it is the first message I send, I encrypt using Bob's public key. And Bob decrypts it using his private key and then discovers inside that what Alice has sent is a message saying, essentially, let's use this symmetric key for the rest of our conversation. And then from that point on, any messages that go back and forth either from Alice or from Alice to Bob or from Bob to Alice are then encrypted using that symmetric key. So this is a way that I can bootstrap the process. I have to do a little bit of that computationally intensive public key encryption at the beginning, but very quickly I get to the point where all my messages are sent using symmetric key encryption, which, which can be as secure as public key encryption, if not more secure, but is much faster to perform both on the receiver and on the sender.